well, uh, recently I've been writing Morbus uh, drivers and uh, some of my colleagues have been asking me uh, repeatedly I mean, how do I really write those drivers and uh, if at all you are not familiar with uh, uh, Modbus protocol itself then uh, I would say that well this is a protocol uh, implemented inside most of the electronic device especially PLCs and energy meters and on most of the industrial device you find these days let it be drive or let it be any kind of uh, device uh, which is supposed to be sharing data between uh, any other device uh, this is the f very fundamental and, and the simplest protocol and, and quite old one and, and I, I would say most efficient one that you would see uh, implemented inside those devices. Usually uh, you will uh, buy an HMI or maybe an uh, SCADA, which bigger HMIs are usually called SCADAs. They are supervisory data control and acquisition systems, which is essentially a software which has a user interface and, and drivers inside it. And uh, so it lets you talk to the device itself. I mean, so in industries, typically, uh, if you go on buying these HMIs, I mean, these softwares, they come pretty expensive and they can't come on tag basis. Uh, I don't want to be sharing numbers here in terms of price, but yeah, WinCC is, is it's a Siemens product, pretty costly one. I don't say costly, I mean, they do the job, so. Uh, they're, they're very much worth the money but still yeah I mean if you are somebody who's making you know, your own products and if you are somebody who could really write those drivers yeah so you can really yeah there's no need buying these expensive uh, software hey I'm, I'm, I'm not criticizing or, 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 or trying to take anything away from Siemens they are driving half of the ball boys so yeah but but I'm just trying to make a point that if you could really write those drivers uh, there's no need you should really go and, and, and buy products from from most of the vendors and, and again I mean uh, not trying to take anything away from anybody uh, not at all not at all I myself uh, have been using lot, lots of SCADA product when I started as an automation person, I mean, long time back, I've been, I remember I was doing ABB DCS with, with some of my friends from Europe and uh, yeah, it really, it was an ABB's uh, AC 500 DCS long time back, yeah. It was written in FBD. Recently, I have I myself have been using uh, Wonderwear. It's an Invensys product, which is Schneider Electric now. And uh, also, um, I have I have seen uh, applications like uh, Prophecy iFix, which is uh, G Fanux product. Great software again, pretty inexpensive. So all these are 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 pretty inexpensive. Not inexpensive. Yeah, pretty good written software that will allow you to talk to your drive on say energy meter or maybe maybe PLCs or TCS whatever uh, you have uh, but the point is and then the video I am trying to put here is that you can really if you are proficient in software and doesn't matter I mean it could be C++ or Java or it could be any language uh, you prefer I mean it's it's not a barrier at all I mean so you know any object-oriented programming language could be Ruby or Python or whatever C sharp uh, recently I've been doing C sharp I find it pretty cool and uh, <clears throat> yeah could be even VB yeah so and 
if you could do the GUIs and if you have you know little knowledge of writing software and then you've got a little understanding of electronics and how how these things work and how you know master and slave protocols are implemented how do they talk to each other then you can really write your own uh, HMI softwares yeah I have been writing my own HMI software for quite a long time. And in fact, some of my friends would be asking me, how do I do this? How do I do that? And that is the reason why I'm, I'm trying to, you know, put up this set of videos in which, uh, in which we'll first try to like, I mean, try to take a look at that Modbus protocol itself, which is uh, implemented inside a PLC or your drive, AC drive. Or, and then then we'll try to this is pretty much electronics yeah this is pretty much this is very much essentially this is electronics and 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 we'll try to understand it from protocol level and then we'll try to write our own protocol from scratch yeah we'll not be taking any written libraries from anywhere else we will just be referring this document we'll be referring the uh, the the PLC hardware document and we'll be writing our own HMI GUI that that user interface from scratch ourselves and it could be a good learning curve I mean it, it you could be somebody you know you be say using proficiency I fix for for quite a long time and drag in and drop in and then you think that you know things happen by by some magic actually I can show you that there's no magic I mean these things are pretty very much documented and and they are very much laid out the best thing I like about this this uh, Modbus protocol is that it I believe it was the first one it was first uh, developed by a company named Morricone Morricone is uh, Schneider Electric now and and uh, it still is the simplest and the best protocol defined I mean after this I mean many people have come many companies have come with many protocols I mean uh, there are hundreds yeah the, the, but the pain area with those protocols is that they're not quite open source I mean recently I've been trying to write uh, a driver for uh, I was trying to talk to a Siemens PLC is was S7 1200 if I could uh, recall correctly and uh, I realized then then I was in a need of uh, referring the document that Siemens calls uh, I don't know uh, can't quite remember well it was uh, 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 I don't know it was Profinet ah yeah it was Profinet and I was trying to talk to a prof Profinet master from my laptop oh man the worst thing that I found out is that it's not open source if you wanted the document of Profinet, you got to be paying a hell lot of money to some organization, yes, the governing body of Profinet. I mean, that really, you know, I was not really happy to see that. And and that's ex ex that is the reason why probably I would say that um, about almost all, not about, just about all devices, either they have inbuilt mod this this modbus protocol or they have a device which you can you know stick to that main cpu and then then the the cpu would start to talk to modbus protocol well so that makes it a great protocol and the best thing about it is that it's open source it's laid out you can really go to modbus website and really you can you can download take a look understand the electronics and how you know Datagrams are written and you can stay away right to your own software and talk to electronic devices in this uh, I have, uh, In this video uh, I would recommend that you see the first part how how my you know, device is set up Okay, I've got a ABB's PLC yours need not be Precisely ABB's you could be using you know G Fanox or maybe Alan Bradley's or, or, or Mitsubishi's PLC it doesn't really matter the only thing there are, but there are a few things uh, that that go specific with that PLC is that uh, you have to have uh, your cable that that really connects to the PLC 